So Sean Roberts asked, would you be able to make a video on the Shannara bloodline and how they still have magic unlike other elves? Why, yes, I can, Sean. Yes, I can. So the short answer is there isn't anything special about the Shannara bloodline that makes having magic possible. And depending on what you mean by having magic, all elves still have magic. I know that might not make sense, so let me explain a little bit about how magic works in the Shannara universe. First off, there are three types of magic. Magical items, innate magic, and uh, learned magic. Uh, first, we're going to tackle magical items. There are a number of different magical items that appear in the Shinar universe, but by far the most widely used are elf stones of varying types. Aside from these, we have seen mostly bladed weapons like the swords of Shinara and Lee, as well as the steel and assassin's blade. The one thing that they all have in common are that they are objects that have been infused with magical powers. The steel, for instance, has magical properties that allow it to defeat any magical defense. But back to the elf stones. As I have stated in an earlier video, each set of elf stones uh, were created for a distinct purpose. The blue elf stones are by far the most used in the series, since they are the seeking stones. Much of the Shinar adventures uh, revolve around journeys, hidden treasures in far off lands, which make stones that find what is lost or hidden quite handy. To wield elf stones, one must be an elf. This is a handy failsafe built into them to prevent an enemy of the elves from using these powerful weapons against them. What this means for our purposes is that a being must only have elven blood flowing through their veins to activate elven magic. That is why in the books and the series, a rover holding the elf stones couldn't make them work, but Will could. Will is partially elven. His elven blood allows him to forge a connection to the magic and use the stones. But that is true of any elf who tries to use the stones as long as they were freely given to them. You can't steal elf stones. If you do, elf or not, they just won't work for you. Most of the magical items in the series work this way. Anyone who wields the steel can use its power. It's just a tool. The swords of Shannara and Lee are special cases. They are both mystically tied to the royal bloodlines of each of those houses. So next we're going to talk about innate magic. Innate magic, or magic that you are born with, which was common among the elves, now only appear in the descendants of Will Omsford. Uh, although tied to Will's elven blood, it isn't because of it that his descendants have the wish song. Uh, at least not in the way you're thinking. In the Elfstones of Shannara, Will is the grandson of the half-elven Shay, as opposed to his son, which makes him one-sixteenth elven. He still has sufficient elven blood to wield the stones, but he lacks conviction. When we meet Will, he is finishing up his training with the stores and is about to go into the world as a healer. The entire motivation behind Will's character is to heal, to save. When he is called upon to protect Amber Lay, he quickly finds this conviction put to the ultimate test. While at first able to command the Elfstone's power, he quickly loses his connection to them, not because his elven blood is too thin, but because he builds a wall of doubt inside himself that prevents the stones from connecting with his heart, mind, and body, which is necessary for elf stones to work. They derive their power and that power's potency from this connection. That's why most elf stones are found in groups of three, one for each part of the person who wields them. Uh, midway through the book, Will has completely lost his ability to use them, which means he is completely useless as a protector for Amberlay. Uh, as they reach the Bloodfire, the Reaper catches up to them, and in a climactic battle, Will smashes through the wall of doubt he had built up, uh, allowing him to use the stones once more. He is able to destroy the Reaper and save Amberlay. However, the victory did not come without cost. Uh, because of his doubt and reluctance to use the stones to kill, there was a backlash with their power. In the book, it says he felt as though something was changed within him fundamentally. We find out in the next novel, Wish Song of Shannara, what has happened. Uh, part of the Elfstone's essence, their power, remained inside Will, infecting his DNA with their power. When he had children, the twins Bryn and Jer, they were born with innate magic, an evolved form of the Elfstone's power that they uh, called the Wish Song. This power would be passed down from generation to generation, appearing randomly uh, as time goes on. This is the original story and explanation for the creation of the Wish Song. However, it was later retconned that the Wish Song was the result of damage done to Will when he used the Elf Stones without enough Elven blood. You know, what are you going to do? 
there are a number of creatures and animals that have innate magic throughout the history of the books, as well as other characters who have appeared from time to time uh, with innate magic. The most notable and timely for our purposes is Merith. In the books, she appears when Bremen is forging the Sword of Shannara and is convinced that he is her father since no one else uh, has magic that she knows of. This character and storyline has been you know, obviously reworked and included in the second season of the show, with the expected father being Alanon instead of Bremen. In the book, Bremen tells her that unfortunately he doesn't have innate magic, you know, magic that is part of his being, which would be necessary for the passing of magic power from parent to child, as we saw in the case of Will and his children. Unfortunately, the likely explanation is that a demon forced itself on her mother, resulting in that demon's power being passed on to her which is not uh, very good. Uh, in a nutshell, innate magic is very rare and passed through genetics in Shannara. And that leaves us with learned magic. Um, the, the best example are the druids. With one exception, all of the druids have uh, learned magic, powers that they acquired through study, experimentation, hard work, and training. There are others in the books that have learned magic, like sorcerers and witches, but the druids are by far the most often seen. Okay, Sean, I hope that answers your question. And uh, if not, please just leave another comment and I will sort it out. Uh, that's it for this video. If you found it helpful and um, had something else that you would like to have explained, some little piece of minutia from the show, uh, I love that stuff. Just let me know in a comment and I will add it to the list. I have a list of about seven ideas people have uh, given me over the last two weeks that are all great. And uh, when I want to do something a little bit different, I am pulling from that list to make things like this. So just keep them coming and I'll keep making the videos. I uh, will see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.